Sonic Adventure was Sonic's big leap into 3D. Some found the change polarising, others loved it. I happen to really enjoy Sonic Adventure, and its remake Sonic Adventure DX, and being the first true 3D Sonic game, there's an amazing amount of weird facts and mythology surrounding the game. It feels like the perfect follow-up game to examine after my previous Sonic 3 & Knuckles Iceberg. So in this video I present the Sonic Adventure Iceberg. The iceberg is peppered with interesting facts about Sonic Adventure that get more weird and obscure the further down the iceberg we descend. And with a game like Sonic Adventure there's a lot to discuss. My iceberg is based on the mind-blowingly detailed one by Speeps Highway, who also helped to clarify a few facts in this video, so thanks to Speeps for that. And thanks to the other giants whose material informed this video. Cybershell, Windy, and Electro Nuke in particular. It'd take a multi-hour video to cover absolutely every obscure factoid about this game, so I've chosen only my favourite few glitches and weird pieces of lore and other bits and bobs to talk about. If you happen to know anything cool about the game that I didn't mention, please let me know in the comments. And without further ado, let's get going. Sonic Adventure DX Differences Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut is a version of Sonic Adventure originally released for the GameCube in 2003, which has served as the basis for all later re-releases of the game. Despite the name and the later release dates, it's a commonly held opinion that the DX version of the game is inferior to the original, owing to the abundance of new glitches, palette issues, and inferior lighting and textures that the DX version introduced. A moment that encapsulates the differences perfectly is this loop-de-loop -loop in Emerald Coast, infamously glitchy in DX, but perfectly functional in the original. Sonic 3D Music John Senue, Sonic Adventure's composer, previously worked on Sonic 3D for the Sega Genesis, and repurposed a few Sonic 3D tracks. Windy Valley, for example, uses the music from Green Grove Zone Act 1, a portion of Twinkle Park sounds like Panic Puppet Zone Act 1, and Emerald Coast bears a bit of a resemblance to Spring Stadium too. Sonic Jam Assets Sonic Adventure started life as a Sega Saturn title, before development switched to the Dreamcast. Because it started on the Saturn, there's plenty of early mock-ups, screenshots, and even video clips showing Sonic and Tails' Sonic Jam models being used in the game. In the Sky Chase section of the finished Dreamcast game, a scene in which the players can't usually get a good look at Sonic and Tails, a low-poly model of Sonic and Tails is used, which looks a lot like their Sega Saturn models. There's also an unused spring, ripped straight from Sonic Jam. Tails in Emerald Coast It's entirely possible to enter and play through a portion of Emerald Coast with Tails, Knuckles and Amy, who aren't ordinarily meant to be able to enter the stage. Tails can make use of some out-of-bounds clipping, and Knuckles and Amy can leverage the Burger Guy statue in order to hop the Emerald Coast fence and enter the level. Unfortunately, you won't be able to complete the level as it unexpectedly ends just after the lighthouse. Beta Windy Valley The Sonic Adventure Auto demo was a prototype version of the game containing cutscenes and AI gameplay designed to entice Japanese retailers. It offers us a glimpse as to what Sonic Adventure looked like a few months before its eventual release. The stage that underwent the most dramatic alterations between the auto demo and the final version of the game was Windy Valley. Beta Windy Valley looks almost unrecognisable from the final version, both in terms of textures used and stage layout, and it also seemed to include a portion of the stage designed for Big the Cat. Casinoopolis Statue In Casinoopolis, if you collect 5,000 rings as Sonic and deposit them in the treasure room, you can erect a giant golden Sonic statue in the middle of the stage. This process takes quite a while if you really want to try it. What's funny is that the statue is present in Knuckles' Casinoopolis stage, which takes place after Sonic's, suggesting Sonic might canonically have a bit of a gambling problem. What's more, Knuckles can destroy the statue in one single hit, rendering a lot of hard work and hard gambling moot. DLC Sonic Adventure was the first Sonic game to include DLC that could be downloaded via the internet. 
Most of the DLC simply added holiday-themed decorations to the overworld to celebrate Christmas and Halloween, but other DLC also included special time attack challenges and treasure hunts that actually yielded real-life prizes for the top performing players. One particularly interesting piece of DLC is a 1999 New Year DLC exclusive to Japan. It was available for two weeks at the end of 1999, but this piece of DLC was widely feared to have been a piece of permanently lost media. In November 2019, a Dreamcast emulation forum user by the name of Moop the Hedgehog managed to purchase a physical Japanese memory card containing the DLC and saving it from being lost to the sands of time. Unnamed Sonic Robot Two robots can be spotted inside stasis tubes in the final egg area. One of them is recognisably Metal Sonic. The other is a completely unused metallic version of Sonic, who has never appeared in any Sonic game since, which is a shame because he looks pretty cool. Though he did make a bigger appearance in the Archie comic books, where he's tasked with destroying Station Square. Cream Cameo In Sonic Adventure DX, Cream the Rabbit, who debuted a year earlier in Sonic Advance 2, makes a few cameo appearances in the game. She can be seen flying overhead in certain scenes. On the PC port of the game, Cream's textures look kind of bad and messed up. Metal Sonic Collecting emblems in the GameCube version of DX unlocks different retro games as you play, but collecting all 130 emblems unlocks playable Metal Sonic. Metal Sonic is just a reskin of Sonic using Metal's Sonic Adventure 2 battle model. He doesn't change the story in any way, but he's kind of a cool little treat. Secret Passages Sonic Adventure is actually a pretty vast game, and if you take the time to explore and look around, you find all manner of strange and weird little secret passageways and rooms. One interesting one is towards the end of Final Egg. There's a slow moving platform that takes about five minutes to come down and go back up again. Having the patience to ride it rewards the player with four one-ups. Another notable one is this long passage in Tails' Casinoopolis zone that leads to nowhere. It might have been planned to be a shortcut, but went unfinished. City Hall Clock Interestingly, most of the clocks that can be seen in the game are static images, except for one clock on the City Hall. It starts at 10am and actually moves once per minute. Unfortunately though, the time resets when you leave the map. Cowgirl Sign in the original Japanese version of the game, Casinoopolis is decorated with a giant neon cowgirl sign. The suggestive cowgirl has a huge cocktail in hand and lets off a strange Japanese sound when interacted with that some have interpreted as a moan. This sign was dropped for the international release of the game. Pachikamak's Eyes The Echidna Elder, Pachikamak, appears with his eyes closed in every single cutscene of the game. He does actually have eye textures though, but they obviously go unseen. Playable Eggman The Eggman and Takal models in the game's cutscenes are actually programmed the same way as playable characters. Via hacking, the two characters can be accessed and both share the ability to run and jump, though they can't interact with enemies. Sky Chase Dragon One of the more interesting unused objects found in the game is this mechanical multi-headed dragon that was originally planned to be a boss in the Sky Chase portion of the game. The dragon is accessible via hacking, but only has a complete flying animation and no attacks to speak of, so how the boss fight would have played out is unknown. The Man 3 Across the way from Casinoopolis in Station Square, there's a large movie poster for the fictional Chow in Space. During the Egg Walker fight in the Dreamcast version of the game, however, it changes to a poster for another fictional movie, The Man 3. The Man 3 was used in all scenes of the game in early versions. This poster doesn't appear in the DX version of the game. Mystery NPC This refers to a strange character who only seems to appear in the intro, outro and other cutscenes of the game, sometimes appearing quite prominently he doesn't actually appear anywhere in the game as an NPC in the overworld, though. 
gliding tutorial. One oddity of the auto demo is a gliding tutorial at the beginning of Knuckles' Red Mountain stage. This is a little strange because in the final game, Knuckles' first stage is Speed Highway, so this suggests the order of the stages of the game experienced some restructuring. Knuckles' E3 voice. In the E3 trial version of Sonic Adventure, Knuckles has a totally different voice actor. The vast majority of Knuckles' lines were then redubbed by his final voice actor a few months before release. Exactly why Knuckles' voice underwent such a dramatic change is unknown, though the original performance was gruffer and stiffer, which might well have been why. Weirdly enough, one piece of dialogue, an unenthusiastic, oh no, by the original voice actor remained in the game and has become a bit of a meme because of how awful it is. What's going on here? Oh no! Something's happened to the Master Emerald! Huh? Who are you? Did you do this? Oh, I'll get you for this! Oh! 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 What's going on here? Oh no! Something's happened to the Master Emerald! Huh? Who are you? Did you do this? Oh, I'll get you for this! Oh! Ah! Uh. Eh. Hey! No fair! E105 Dreamcast Textures. One of my favorite little facts is this one. Part of E105 Zeta's body is actually made of low-resolution Sega Dreamcasts. E3 NPC Dialogue Sonic Adventure is packed with NPCs, and a lot of these NPCs have some strange dialogue. Talk to them and you'll find there are subplots that revolve around a gambling-addicted mother, a gentleman engaging in an affair, and a woman you can talk to while Sonic casually drowns. The E3 trial version of the game contains some really interesting dialogue that was ultimately altered. One kid originally alluded to both Sonic 3 and & Knuckles and Sonic CD, but that was changed to remove the mention of Little Planet. Here's another example. One echidna would actually drop some Latin on you. Cogito ergo sum. Changed to the English, I think, therefore I am, in the final release. A lot of E3 NPCs also seem a little bit depressed, too. South America Trip in an effort to make Sonic Adventure look as realistic as possible, the development team took a trip to Mexico and Peru, visiting famous sites like Chichen Itza and Machu Picchu for inspiration. The trip actually informed quite a lot of the game. Some photos taken on the trip made it into the game as textures, many place names of temples visited, like Tikal and Pachacamac, inspired characters in the game, and the sandboarding section of Sand Hill was directly inspired by the team witnessing dune boarding in Peru. Supersonic voice clips. This refers to another idea that seems to have been scrapped in development. It seems that Supersonic, who is only playable during the Perfect Chaos final boss, was going to be accessible in, perhaps, all levels of the game. A tutorial-style voice clip explaining how to transform into Supersonic exists in the game files. Gather 50 rings and press the action button while you jump. You'll transform into Super Sonic, but watch out for your ring consumption. Sorry Charlie. This refers to a message that pops up on a monitor when playing as Big on the airborne Egg Carrier. The full message reads, the Egg Carrier has taken off. Sorry Charlie. Who exactly Charlie is, is a bit of a mystery I'm afraid. Parappa the Rapper Connection. Plenty of famous musicians have worked on Sonic soundtracks in the past, and Dread Fox is another name for the list. He's known most famously for voicing Parappa the Rapper. He rapped the song Unknown from M.E., which is Knuckles' theme song. This sounds like a pretty cool connection, but Fox has since been accused of scamming some fans and disappeared from the internet, so perhaps not so cool. Sky Chase Cannon Failure In Sky Chase Act 2, the player must defeat the Egg Carrier's cannon to complete the stage. If the player waits for a minute and a half, the cannon will actually start to drain its own health bar, eventually defeating itself. I'm not sure why this happens, 
but it's not a great design by Dr. Eggman. Yuji Naka's Grocery Store On Amy's paper grocery bag that she holds in the first cutscene of her story, you can see the text U2 marked. U2 is the nickname of lead programmer of early Sonic games, Yuji Naka, a nickname you'll find in the credits of early Sonic games for which Yuji Naka was lead programmer. I guess in the game, Yuji owns a grocery store in Station Square. No memory card run glitch. This glitch is well known thanks to YouTuber Some Call Me Johnny. Complete the entirety of the game on the Dreamcast in one single sitting, without a memory card plugged into the controller, and when you reach the final portion of the game, Big's textures will completely glitch out. Lost Sonic Plush. This alludes to a 2012 Sonic Stadium article. The article mentions a 1999 Japanese TV ad for Sonic Adventure, in which a Sonic plush is thrown out of a moving aeroplane over a jungle in Brazil. The article offers an update as to the fate of the plush, saying that it was actually found by an Amazonian tribe and has been looked after by them ever since. If you want to hear more about this amazing discovery by a team of anthropologists, then check the date of the article. Electric Chair Model in the Red Mountain stage inside the volcano, there's a few morbid things to be found. There are tombstones, strange imprisoned ghostly figures, and most shockingly of all, two electric chairs. Quite grim for a Sonic game, but it gets weirder though. When you play as Sonic, the mountain floods with lava, and when you play later as Gamma, the lava is gone along with all of the prisoners, suggesting they might have died in the lava. Vaporwave Station Square it's been highlighted by Gerard the Completionist and others that Station Square is, at times, the perfect embodiment of the Vaporwave aesthetic. Unsurprisingly, there's plenty of Vaporwave-style art and music based on Sonic Adventure to be found out there. Another Vaporwave link is a rare bug that can occasionally occur when playing on a Dreamcast emulator that turns the hub world a metallic, neon rainbow green. By the looks of it, Sega have also recognised the game's Vaporwave aesthetic, because the 2019 T. Lopez Station Square Remix video leans heavily into that look. Angel Island Property Market This is a theory first put forward by Speeps Highway. Some of Sonic Adventure takes place on Angel Island, including Ice Cap Zone, which is in both Sonic Adventure and Sonic 3. In Sonic 3, Knuckles existed on the island alone, but in Sonic Adventure, Ice Cap clearly has some cosy looking houses. What exactly is going on here? The theory goes that Knuckles is actually a real estate mogul, getting rich off of renting Angel Island properties. Alternative Chaos Mural The beta version of Sonic Adventure DX contained a Chaos Mural with slightly more vibrant colours, which looks a little bit more sinister. Satanic Symbolism there are one or two weirdly demonic things about Sonic Adventure. One is this particular texture, depicting a satanic face which appears in the centre of the arena where Chaos 2 is fought. I've not been able to find exactly what this texture is meant to be, maybe it's some sort of ancient Greek thing, I don't know. But here's something else weird to go along with it. The original box art of the game has this text on the back. Six stories, six characters, Six actions. 666, the number of the beast, to quote Iron Maiden. This only appeared on the rear of the Japanese and Brazilian box of the game. Secret satanic messages or mere coincidences? You decide. Realistic Blue Hedgehog. The realistic blue hedgehog image is a pretty famous drawing by artist and designer Yuji Uekawa, found on a promotional Sonic Adventure VHS tape that introduces the core of Sonic Team. One still from the VHS actually found its way into the game's files, perhaps as a joke. Sonic Love Story. This refers to another relatively famous image from the same VHS tape. Takashi Iizuka, Sonic Adventure's director, can be seen sat in front of a computer screen with a bizarre image of Sonic in a bikini on it. He explains this is an upcoming game called Sonic Love Story, a dating simulator. If you hadn't guessed by now, the VHS is tongue-in-cheek, so yeah, don't hold out any hope that this one is still being worked on. The 
The Death of Johnny Lightfoot. Johnny Lightfoot was a prominent character in the British Sonic the Comic. In the comic's adaption of the Sonic Adventure storyline, Chaos actually kills Johnny, quite significant to some British fans, because this might well have been the first traumatic death suffered by a Sonic character. Writer Nigel Kitching has mentioned he received hate mail for killing off Johnny, and the comic would cease printing shortly after his demise. Maybe Johnny was the key to the comic's success all along. Knuckles Adventure Knuckles Adventure was a popular spoof created back in the year 2000. A fan called Liam Chainspike threw together a webpage with some mock-up box art, logos, wallpaper, screenshots and character art of Knuckles and the Chaotix. It was all fake of course, but it succeeded in whipping up some excitement about this fake game. The art still stands the test of time, it's damn cool. Sonic X is the real director's cut. Sonic X adapted the Sonic Adventure story at one point in its run. What's interesting is that a lot of unused lines of dialogue from early versions of Sonic Adventure appear verbatim in Sonic X. A brilliant video to watch about this has been put together by Windy Gitlord. They quite rightly suggest that Sonic X, not Sonic Adventure DX, is the real director's cut of Sonic Adventure. Oshima Schism Sonic Adventure would end up being the final Sonic game worked on by the character's original creator, Naoto Oshima. Though never officially stated, rumours have circulated that Oshima's departure was down to his being unhappy with the continued direction of the Sonic franchise, as well as clashes with Yuji Naka. We don't know whether any of this is true, but curiously, Oshima's name was removed from the credits when Sonic Adventure DX released for the GameCube. Cancelled Burger King promotion In the late 1990s, to coincide with the game's release, a line of Burger King toys were planned that, for some reason, never saw the light of day. The range would have been quite extensive, and was planned to include all of the major characters – Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Big, E-102, Eggman, and this rather odd Amy Rose toy. Sonic also looks like a weird cross between his adventure and classic design. Mock-ups of all of these toys were leaked onto the internet decades later, in 2014. Irimajiri Apparition The Shoichiro Irimajiri video is a Dreamcast tech demo from the Dreamcast 1998 unveiling, which showed Irimajiri's head, rendered in real time and altered by various different effects and textures to show off the capabilities of the Dreamcast. Very briefly, in a blink and you'll miss it scene, Sonic runs past Irimajiri's head. Obviously, Irimajiri doesn't actually appear in Sonic Adventure. Windy Valley Beer This is probably my favourite fact of all. On the aforementioned South America trip, Sega took plenty of photos that actually made it into the game as textures. One photo, of a 12 angled stone, appears in Windy Valley. This particular stone is actually a national heritage object, and features on the bottles of Peruvian beer, Cusquenia. Hence, Windy Valley Beer, address directory. One of the strangest pieces of discovered, unused content is the address directory. The Japanese version of the game disc contains two large files that contain 119,000 seemingly random Japanese commercial addresses. Contained within is even the address for fellow game company Capcom. Title card jingles Despite the name, this is a slightly creepy one. The game was originally going to have little musical cues that played over the title cards for the adventure fields. Four have been found in the game's files. One for Station Square, two for Mystic Ruins and one for Egg Carrier. The second Mystic Ruins and the Egg Carrier jingles are, frankly, rather creepy. Take a listen to them all. Amy wears inhibitor rings. 
Inhibitor rings are golden bracelet-like objects worn by Shadow the Hedgehog, which are designed to restrain his power. Eagle-eyed fans have noticed that Amy seems to wear exactly the same golden bracelets too. Considering Amy's extremely slow walking speed in Sonic Adventure, it's been theorised that Amy's bracelets might also be inhibitor rings. Which, if true, raises the question, why does she need to wear them? Mystery Email This refers to a cryptic message found on the official Sonic Adventure website. It's pretty old, but you can still visit it. Navigate to the Chow section of the website, and you'll find a message that reads, By the way, have you checked the mystery email that arrives every hour from 9am? Now, unfortunately, this is one that I have no idea what this message is referring to, but I'd love to know if anyone can shed some light on this one. Chow can talk. A weird inconsistency of the Chow is the fact that they all seemingly have the ability to talk, though most choose not to most of the time. This shouldn't come as a massive surprise because, after all, the Black Market Chow speaks to the player. But if you hook up your Game Boy Advance to a Nintendo GameCube, you can port your Chow over to the portable GBA Chow Garden. Even your own silent Chow that might only make baby noises will actually speak to you, and they have some pretty bizarre things to say. Modern Sonic's Secret First Appearance one of the most dramatic changes Sonic's design underwent for Sonic Adventure was being given green eyes. But Sonic had actually appeared in a game with green eyes a year before Sonic Adventure. In 1997, arcade fishing game Get Base had a Sonic lore, and you'll notice the lore has those iconic green eyes. In January 1998, months before the official unveiling of the Sonic Adventure redesign, the green-eyed Sonic also graced the cover of the Sonic R soundtrack CD too. Big grows marijuana. Fans like to make fun of Big's laid-back way of speaking, but there might be a reason for his relaxed speech patterns. Take a look at Big's opening cutscene, which shows where he lives, and you might see the leaves of a very familiar plant. Marijuana leaves, perhaps. In all honesty, plenty of tropical plants have seven leaves, but the thought that Big is growing his own marijuana adds a lot to his character. Casinoopolis is rigged. Is the Knights into Dreams pinball table in Casinoopolis rigged? There are 10 cards that can be collected when playing the table. Five green and five red. Collecting five of the same color grants a bonus. However, weirdly, one red card never appears, meaning it's impossible to get a straight bonus by collecting the red cards. This obviously means that there's something crooked going on at Casinoopolis. Super Emeralds. One of the biggest inconsistencies in the Sonic franchise is the size, shape, and number of the Chaos Emeralds. Even within Sonic Adventure, the size seems to change throughout the game. In most cutscenes, the Emeralds are small and handheld, but in the past, the Emeralds appear significantly larger. Is this an oversight by the developers, or did the Super Emeralds from Sonic 3 and Knuckles actually managed to sneak into this scene of the game. Michael Jackson Cameo Is there a little Michael Jackson cameo in Sonic Adventure? In Big the Cat's story, at one point, the hotel manager will tell Big, there is someone here by the name of Frog. In the Japanese version of the game, the manager says, there is someone here by the name of Michael. This is a little complicated. Maikiru is a play on words because keru means frog. Maikiru seems to be used exclusively to refer to the Archangel Michael, with Jackson and others being transliterated using different katakana characters. But considering Sega still had a working relationship with Jackson in the late 90s, he did sneak into Space Channel 5 after all, it's still possible that this is a little nod to the King of Pop. Curse of the Burger Statue I didn't think I'd be talking about the Burger Guy statue so much. He's probably a reference to Colonel Sanders of KFC. One NPC in Station Square, a girl who's intimately familiar with the statue, tells you never to throw it in the river. This is a reference to the Curse of the Colonel, a Japanese urban legend which claims that Japanese baseball team Hanshin Tigers were cursed by the ghost of Colonel Sanders after fans of theirs threw a Sanders statue into the Dotonbori River. There is also some debate as to whether this statue is actually alive. The statue girl mentions he likes to go on trips sometimes, 
and in Sonic Adventure DX, you'll find him misplaced in odd locations. Surely Burger Guy is this game's most interesting character. Chow Exploitation The Chow are presented in the game as cuddly creatures to raise and pet, but there might be some exploitation going on behind the scenes. One piece of evidence for this is the hotel in Station Square. It contains a chow garden, and the hotel manager is pretty insistent about the player visiting the garden. It seems that the garden is a big selling point of the hotel, which might be profiteering off its captured chow. There is also evidence that chow eggs are a hot commodity. There are three hidden valuable chow eggs in the game. One is imprisoned in the egg carrier. Another is guarded in an antique store in Station Square. Finally, in the Chow Garden, the Chow are encouraged to compete and race, and when they're placed in the Chow Transporter, they seem to go into quite the uncomfortable state. If you combine all of this evidence, along with the rigorous and intrusive archaeological activity in Mystic Ruins, it might suggest that Chaos's fury in the game and his destruction of Station Square might have been a crusade to crush the sinister system of Chow exploitation. It's just a theory but it makes Chaos a very sympathetic bad guy. Tails Doll Origins We have Sonic Adventure to thank for the creation of creepypasta icon Tails Doll. Although Tails Doll originally appeared in Sonic R, it's been confirmed that he was created by Sonic Adventure background artist Yoshitaka Miura, who also created the Sonic and Knuckles dolls that appear in E102 Gamma's target practice stage. Sonic Team found the Tails Doll design so endearing that they then added a tweaked version of it to Sonic R, which was in development at the same time. Chaos is real. Did you know that the villain of the game, Chaos, was at least partially inspired by a real-life amoeboid organism, also called Chaos? Just like Sonic's nemesis, the amoeboids have a watery body, the ability to change shape, and a prominent membrane. It's hard to deny the similarities between the two, Look hard enough, and you might even see perfect chaos in this image. Shadow and Rouge Some like to joke that Shadow and Rouge were teased in Sonic Adventure in some way, but I can't find any evidence of that. What can be found, hidden within Sonic Adventure DX's game files though, are crayon drawings of Shadow and Rouge. These are here because a lot of the elements of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle's Chow Garden were recycled for Sonic Adventure DX. In Sonic Adventure 2, when a Chow bonds with a specific character, they occasionally do crayon drawings of them. Obviously these go unused in Sonic Adventure DX, but they're still there on the disc. Half-Life Connection When the Half-Life Dreamcast port was in development, Valve originally planned to include a few Sega Easter eggs. Breaking open crates would unveil Sonic Adventure discs and Dreamcast virtual memory units. These Easter eggs didn't make it into the final cut of the game because ultimately, the Dreamcast port was dropped due to the Dreamcast poor sales performance, but it might still be safe to assume that Sonic Adventure canonically exists in the Half-Life universe. Sonic the Human One particularly strange image you might occasionally see online is this Sonic Adventure-style Sonic the Human image. Although occasionally misidentified as fan art, this is actually an original work by Sonic Adventure artist Yuji Uekawa. The image was originally designed for the Tokyo Game Show 2001 pamphlet based on the theme Let's Play Together. Whether this character is meant to be a literal human version of Sonic or just a Sonic cosplayer was never actually confirmed. And that is the bottom of this iceberg. If you happen to know any curiosities about this game, please share them in the comments. I'd love to hear more. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, consider giving the video a like and subscribing for more gaming stuff in the future. See you next time.